The world of The Last of Us is both beautiful and ugly. Taking a moment or two now and again to take in the visuals that Naughty Dog has crafted is absolutely mind-blowing. They have been known to bring out the best in the PlayStation 3, and this game is no exception. With the people of this world more focused on survival, nature itself has taken over. Every building has some form of growth in practically every corner. It's wonderful to see just how the vegetation of this world has begun to peek through the cracks as if the earth itself were alive. Each and every character, no matter how minor, has been brought to life beautifully. Naughty Dog has been known for a long time to get the animation of not only the bodies of these people, but the faces as well. This game in particular might just be their best work to date in that regard. Faces show true emotion, and even with the sound turned off, I imagine it wouldn't be too hard to figure out how a character feels at that given moment. The infected themselves get a similar visual treatment, with spouts and the fungus appearing on various parts of the body. The change in the facial structure of the clickers is downright terrifying, with the fungus seemingly splitting the skull open. These people look nothing like their former selves, and it is an absolutely gruesome sight to behold. One thing I absolutely love about this generation of consoles is the ability to have true 5.1, or in some cases, 7.1, surround sound. For the games that take advantage of it, the sound coming at you from every angle helps immerse you in the game like almost nothing else, and The Last of Us is no exception. The feeling of being in a room surrounded by clickers, knowing at any second they could hear you and alert their infected brethren, is one like almost no other. Stalking through a darkened room, hearing them making that horrifying sound in every direction had my heart rate up, and my hands shaking. The music is almost non-existent, at least it feels that way when traversing through the game world. Maybe that's just my lack of attention to detail. In part, that's why when the music does hit, it has more of an impact. Most of the audio comes from gunshots and screams, and clicker noises and a lot of the gunfire sounds sound as if they are ripped directly from the Uncharted series. That's not to say it's a negative, mind you. Each firearm sounds exactly like you imagine it would. Pistols have a satisfying crack, and shotguns have a bass-filled boom associated with each pull of the trigger. The dialogue in this game, along with the performances given by the actors themselves, are second to none. In traditional voiceover work, the lines of the various characters are usually done at separate times. If you have been following the work of Naughty Dog all this time, you know that is not the case with their titles, and each one is the better for it. The actors are usually in the same room, acting out the actions on screen as if they were filming it for a Hollywood blockbuster. Characters speak and react naturally to each other. None of the acting feels hammy, and every actor is perfectly tailored to their character. Having spent the last 20 years surviving in the world the game presents, Joel has picked up on a few skills that will help him to make it out alive. By holding down R2, you are able to sense sound to a greater extent. If someone is talking while they walk, you can see an outline of said character through whatever object you happen to be hiding behind. This comes in handy very often, and doesn't come off as too unrealistic. The multiple characters that are with you during the course of this game aren't totally helpless either. Luckily, enemies will all but ignore the other character as they run around and hide behind objects. It takes a bit of the realism out of the game admittedly, but it's better than turning the entire game into one giant escort mission. Another good thing about having these folks around you is that they actually help in combat. If Ellie manages to be around while someone is trying to strangle you, she'll throw a brick at their head giving Joel enough time to deal with the attacker. If given a gun, she will also shoot. And the combat is where a bit of the gameplay starts to make a turn for the worse. Even then, it's not particularly weak, but in a game filled with so much greatness, what sticks out as bad really manages to stick out, and the experience as a whole is brought down for it. In most combat situations you come across in The Last of Us, you can see them coming a mile away. 
waist-high objects are strewn throughout the room to indicate an oncoming battle, and it is a problem that unfortunately plagues third-person action games as a whole. The shooting mechanics, while tolerable most of the time, seem to falter in high-tension situations. I cannot tell you the number of times I have aimed at someone's head that is charging at me, pulled the trigger, and because of some random animation, I end up missing by a few magic pixels. This particular problem is especially frustrating given that there are certain enemy types that are one-hit kills. Let them get to you, and you are done. And while this is part of the difficulty of the game overall, it only led to frustration on my end, and having to restart entire counters from the last autosave checkpoint is not something I am a fan of. The good thing is that if you play smart and take your time, you can avoid conflict altogether. This is especially wise because ammunition is in short supply, as are the necessary items to let you heal yourself. While there are items in the world that can restore health instantly, Joel is capable of creating not only med packs, but things like shivs, Molotov cocktails, and smoke bombs. The majority of the time you will be relying on the med packs that you have to create in real time. Not only is the creation of these health items in real time, the application of them is as well. There's no pausing of the action here. If someone is bearing down on you and you need to take a second to craft or heal yourself, you are screwed. There are also benches located throughout the world that let you upgrade your weapons, and even create secondary holsters to hold more firearms. Don't get me wrong, these frustrating moments are few and far between in the overall scheme of things, but in a way that just serves to highlight them even further. There is a segment about three quarters of the way through the game that seemed to compound all of the problems I was having with the game into one 20 minute chunk. Needless to say, I was not enjoying myself. When it's all said and done, The Last of Us is quite honestly a masterpiece, and a fantastic send-off to the platform that made it all possible. Some are calling it the PlayStation 3's swan song, and I am inclined to believe them. It's not perfect by any means, but the good far, far outweighs the bad. Naughty Dog's final game on the PlayStation 3 knocks it out of the park. I, for one, cannot wait to see what they do with the PlayStation 4. I give The Last of Us a 9 out of 10.